Hi everyone and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to make your own custom Canva frames in Affinity Designer. I'll be using version two of the desktop app. However, the process is the same for both versions of desktop and iPad. So as long as you know where everything is located, you can easily follow along. This same process can be used in Affinity Photo and Publisher as well. Now, before we get started, let's head into Canva and talk about the frames themselves. So what are Canva frames? Well, they're shapes that allow you to clip images, videos, and other graphics inside of them. And those graphics take on the shape of the frame. So I have this circle frame in here and I pulled it from the elements section in Canva and I'll go to the photos and drag this guy in. And you can see that it not only took on the shape, but it actually sized itself automatically. Now I can double click this and drag it around if there's space available. I can also go back to my photos and drag in as many different images as I'd like. Canva comes with a lot of built in frames, but what if you want something really specific, say for a particular font or a specific shape, that's where it comes in handy to be able to create your own. So let's head over to designer and do just that. I've created a standard square document, 1080 by 1080 pixels with a transparent background. That's going to allow me to use the frame at a larger size, but also size down when I need to, if I'm going to fit it into a composition. The transparent background is key because you want to be able to pull this into one of your designs in Canva without the white background that designer automatically adds. For my frame, I'll start with a simple flower shape and I'm going to create it using a combination of the built-in cog shape and mesh groups. So I'll select a black fill and no stroke. The color really doesn't matter. I'm choosing black so that you can see it on video and select the cog shape and then just drag this out. And I'm going to use these little handles to drag in and out wherever possible to form my flower to one final one, and I'll change the teeth number to seven. So this is nice, but it's rather flat and boring. So I want to add a warp to it. Now, warp groups is in version two of the app. If you're following along on version one, you're going to have to skip this step. If you do have it, you can just go to the layers panel and with it selected, choose warp. I'm going to add a horizontal bend and I want to bend it down instead of up. So I'll just drag it down to about 30, convert to curves, and I want to size this down a bit and center it up. Now, whenever you use mesh groups, it automatically creates a group for you. And since I only have a single curve shape and don't need a group for the purposes of Canva, I'm going to get rid of this. So I'll right click and choose ungroup. I also want to rename my layer because I'm going to be using the export persona to export this. And if I leave it as curve, the export person is automatically going to rename it as slice one, which doesn't tell me anything. So I'll double click and I'll call this flower frame 10. I have my background. However, if I pull this into Canva, it would be treated as a simple vector shape. So I could change its color and size, but I wouldn't be able to clip a photograph into it. In order to tell Canva that your shape is a frame, you need to fill it with some sort of raster element. And there are a few quick and easy ways to do that. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the built-in stock studio. However, you could also go up to file and place and pull in an image of your own. Now I want to note the image itself doesn't matter. It's simply a placeholder. So choose whatever you'd like. I'll just pull this one in and I'm going to size it down. I don't want to make a really large file and anytime you use a raster element like this, it automatically increases its size. So I need it to be larger than the shape itself and then I will drag it in and clip it inside of it. So now I'm ready to use this as a frame in Canva. All I need to do is export it. There are a few ways that you can export a single shape like this. You could go up to the file menu and choose the regular export function. In this case, I'm going to choose the export persona. Now I've already changed the name of my layer. If you haven't done that and plan to use the export persona, you're going to want to do that now because you won't be able to change it there. I'll click export persona and now I need to define my slice. So I'll go to the layer studio, select flower frame 10 and then choose 
create slice. Now you can see this blue box around it. I'm going to drag out my corners just a bit. I like to do this because designer tends to hug very closely to the shape. And because I have points here, I want to make sure that it's not going to cut any of them off. Now I'm almost ready to export. However, I need to change my export format. Right now it's defaulting to PNG, which is going to completely flatten the document and therefore the frame wouldn't work. In order to maintain the transparency, the vector shape, as well as the raster element, I need to change this to PDF. So I'm going to change it to PDF digital high quality. Now I'm ready to export. So I'll go to slices and I'll just choose the share button here. I already have my file selected. So I'll click export and now I'm ready to import it into Canva and turn it into a frame. I'm in the Canva app. You can also do this from the browser version as well. It's important to note though that Canva is going to treat this like any other design. It's not going to be an official frame that will be saved with the others in the element section. However, you can create a folder or in Canva, it's known as a project where you can save your custom frames so that you can pull them in whenever you want to use them in a design. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So I'm actually in my frame folder and I'm going to import my design directly into it. I'll click create a design and import file. I'll find that file and open it. I have my file open and you can see that it looks exactly the way that it did in designer. If I move this to the right, you'll see the vector base that I created and this is the raster element that I added on top and this is what's going to become the frame. I'll just pop that back into place. If I go to photos, I can drag images in. If there's room available, I can double click on them and move them around and I can continuously swap images as much as I want. Now, if I want to take it back to the same state that a regular frame is, with that selected, I'll go to the trash can and choose delete image, and now you'll see that little illustration. So it looks just like the built-in frames, but again, it doesn't work the same way as the regular frames. In order to use this in a design, you're going to need to select it and either right-click and copy, or go up to edit, copy, and then go to your design and paste it in. You can size it up and down, you can move it as much as you want, and then it's going to act like any other frame. So I can just pop that in there. Now, because this won't be treated like a regular frame and housed here in Elements, you'll need to save it somewhere else if you plan to use it again. And this is where I recommend setting up a project folder. All you need to do is go to File, Move to Folder, create a folder and then click move and you're all set. So you can just go to the projects and you can see I have all of my frames here. If you have the pro version of Canva, you can share your frame with others, whether for free or as a download that you sell. I would recommend removing any images that you've placed. So again, just hit the trash can and then delete frame. You can create a little document like this, or you can just put the frame in a document, but either way, now it's ready to share. So I'll click share. And if you don't see template link here in the short menu, just click more and you'll see it here. And this is going to create a link that someone can go to, whether you email it, or again, it's provided as a digital download so that they can access the template. When the person opens the link, this is what they're going to see, that it was a template created and shared by you. They're going to see a screen grab of what you've created. And then all they need to do is click use template and it's going to open it in either the app itself or the browser version, depending on what they have on their system. And again, because you've created all of the elements, whether they have a free or pro account, they can use it. So I'd love to know what kind of shapes would you turn into frames? Something floral like we created here, or maybe something more abstract like paint strokes let me know in the comments. If you'd like the video, I'd be grateful if you gave it a thumbs up. Not only does it help more people see the video, it helps keep the channel visible. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask below. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these designer tutorials next.